What in the world? We're trying to plan this huge trip on the spur of the moment? Well, we gotta rewind a second. First, all good trips always start at boonies. But let me tell you how I got here in the first place. Here at Backdraft Bikes, we always try to give you some quality videos with a touch of main humor. Now, the next couple episodes provide exactly that. I'm going on a trip of over 3,500 miles off to southern Georgia. I've got to go down to do a job, but I've also had this on my bucket list for quite some time, you know, to take this ride down both sides of the Appalachian Mountains. I always put off this because you just don't have the time to do what you want to do. Hold down the fort and do all your other responsibilities, right? But this time, I decided to take a different approach. And to do that, I have to tell you how I actually got to this point. You may remember, if you follow my channel, that about a year ago, I actually almost died. April 7th, 2022. My primary care doctor, a stubborn old bird, was not satisfied with radiology reports that I had received over the last few years. See, I had been having some chest pain for quite a while after a pretty serious accident at work. They figured it was just sternum pain or some broken ribs, but the results started to show stress on the left side of my heart and my aorta. In fact, they noticed that I was developing an aneurysm. My cardiologist though had told me, you know, just stop worrying about this because there's nothing you can do. You're young and healthy. People live their whole life like this and there's no big deal. It really isn't that serious. But on an annual physical the week before, April 1st, 2022, primary care physician said otherwise. In fact, she said that I was in dire straits, this, and she made me pinky promise to get a second opinion from a surgeon. In fact, when I went to leave the office, she said, I don't believe you're going to get that second opinion. And I had to turn around and tell her, don't worry, Shirley, I promise. And she said, thank you. And don't call me Shirley. There I was thinking about who I could talk to for this second opinion. And through a friend of a friend, I knew this guy who knew the leading physician out in Chicago University, Dr. J. V. Anandam. In fact, he's renowned for heart transplants. However, Chicago's a little out of my wheelhouse. And anyways, regardless, he was going to give me a second opinion. No, no big deal. My buddy had me send him my images on a DVD, express overnight. He got them. The very next day, he went in to see the doctor. And wouldn't you know, that afternoon, the doctor's nurse called me. And she said... Whatever you're doing right now, you need to stop and prepare for surgery. Yikes, this was a huge wake-up call. So I did what any other firefighter would do and decided that I needed a third opinion, uh, just to make sure this doctor wasn't too hyperactive on the surgery point. Through another colleague, I knew of a surgeon that knew of a surgeon down in New York City. Uh, he ended up setting me up with a free consultation with him as well. In fact, uh, this doctor was pretty chill. He ended up asking me to send him a file through Dropbox so that he could actually do the review. This was Dr. El Hamamsi of Mount Sinai, New York City. Well, after I had sent him the file, the next morning at 7 a.m. my phone rang and it was him and his nurse urging me to come down for surgery right away. They said, I didn't have much time left. In fact, whatever I was doing, I better stop doing it. So here I am looking down the barrel of a life altering surgery. And these doctors are using big words like, you can die from this very easily. It's a silent killer. You're lucky we found this. It's a widow maker. And again, I didn't feel that bad physically. So it was difficult for me to, you know, come to grips with this. So after consulting with my family, of course, thinking about what these very skilled physicians have both said to me, and also some prayers with the man upstairs, I decided to go in for the consultation with the New York surgeon. Little did I know that that would lead to my immediate surgery less than a week later on April 7th, 2022. Well, fast forward, the surgery's over and life was kind of put on hold for almost a solid year, including this motorcycle trip that I always wanted to do. During my three month post-op period, which I basically couldn't do anything, I wasn't bedridden for the whole time, but pretty much couldn't go riding on my motorcycle or do anything outside. Uh, I watched every YouTube video out there on moto camping, long trips, the Blue Ridge Parkway, the long way down, long way up, long ways backwards, forwards, and sideways. I made it my goal to recover as quick as I possibly could following the doctor's orders and get 
on my bike and do some sort of significant moto camping trip because 50% of me wanted to prove something to myself, but the other 50% of myself said, this is gonna be awesome. Six weeks ago, I got the phone call from one of my customers who's been asking me to come down and do a class, but I haven't been well enough. Now I was finally feeling okay everything fell into place Tetris style and I said this is the time to do it so here we are here we are I've just returned home from this epic trip and I want to share the journey with you let's begin wicked good Bob mile zero boonies country stoa let's get this show on the road shall we okay bud we're gonna take a quick stop at the New Hampshire State liquor stoa I'm gonna get something for the trip for the guys down south if it makes it that far. The state of New Hampshire has always reminded me of Las Vegas when we were little. We'd cross over the Green Bridge and you can uh, buy fireworks. There's a liquor store as soon as you cross the line. And there's also a big sign that says if you're under 18, stay buckled up. But over 18, live for your die. So let's go inside and check out what we got. All right, I got my favorite bourbon in there. It's called Wheat Penny, and it's made in Cleveland, Ohio. I'm telling you, if you look at my Instagram, you'll see I had a shoot off with a bunch of these, and this was the favorite. And the cool thing is it actually does come with a Wheat Penny. <laughs> so I'm gonna pack this up and hit the road, Jack. For a second, I would give you a quick tour of the bike of how I packed it up for the trip. So I've got my kitchen stuff in here with food. I've got my sleeping bag and sleeping pad and inflatable pillows in here, extra straps. I've got my clothes and work clothes that I need for down south. The top bag's got smaller clothing items that are more needable and uh, toiletries. The back's got my water and few other things that I need. Uh, this side has the fan and some tools and batteries. And this is my tent uh, and tarp. And then I've got my, some cables and stuff in here that I need for quick access. And of course my cable bar, just in case things get out of control on the highway and you have to do a kickstand. All right, let's get out, let's go. Welcome to the great epic adventure of 2023, boys. It's the ride. Because we're on the great slab for a little bit longer. The first leg of this trip is kind of boring because we just end up going to New Jersey, uh, staying a night with the in-laws, the outlaws, uh, and then Hook and Skyline Drive after that. That'll, so it'll be fun. Uh, not bad. This bike does so good on the highway, though. I, it's not really a highway bike design but it's unbelievably comfortable and I have it all loaded up so I actually have like a built-in backrest right now I love it welcome to Massachusetts please put on your bulletproof vest now thank you interestingly coming up here we're going to be taking 495 over to a town which no one outside of New England can pronounce properly Worcester most people say Worcestershire the Worcestershire's were Wore a Chester, Chester, it's Worcester, Worcester. Yes, uh, Massachusetts, the land where you do not need to use your blinkers for any reason whatsoever. Woo! Ah, yes, sir. Come on, kids, free candy. Or as I say down here, homicide capital of Massachusetts, uh, literally, if you don't know Spanish here, you cannot survive because even some of the street signs are in Spanish. So it's kind of an interesting culture because there isn't a lot of other Spanish people around until you get up there. People just don't know what yield is, do they? They just don't know what yield is. We're just going to come in and drive a Prius. Prius. Gas queen sleigh. This is Worcester, Worcester, Mass, but yes, yeah. Pretty famous city in Mass. 
basically it was an old factory city that produced, I don't know, tons of stuff. But uh, yeah, now it's like a bustling city. You can see the old mills over there. Worcester is also famous for something we're gonna go by in just a second and I'll show you when we get there. It's always uh, a highlight of driving through. WPI is the Worcester Polytechnic Institute, very famous uh, college for doing uh, all types of stuff, especially with the fire sciences. A good friend of mine teaches there. Pretty, pretty interesting school. But the biggest claim to fame in Worcester is right over here on the left. And that is Worcester's own polar bear. And is the polar bear out? It is polar bear, polar bear, polar bear. So it's polar seltzer sandwich, uh, sodas and whatever. Interesting story about that. I did uh, a job in Worcester for the fire department and one of the captains and I were talking and I said, oh, it's always been a thing. Whenever we come down, we always look at the polar bear and chant polar bear. And he said, ah, they're always fighting for years and years to keep the polar bear inflated. And I said, really? Why, why is that? And he said, because people for years would drive by and bow and arrow, shoot bow and arrows at it to deflate it. It was like a ritual of passing for people graduating school. So I thought that was kind of crazy. And I said, oh, that's that's too bad. So I just said, next time I'm coming down here, I'm bringing my bows and arrows. <laughs> a lot of traffic, temperatures up 10 degrees. Yeehaw! Time to get some food for the bike and some food for myself at the rest stop. This should be fun. Here we go. Next stop, Hartford, baby. Let's do it. Yes, Connecticut. Wing it on wheels, bud. What does it mean to chicken like a champ? Yes, yeah. Let's do it, bud. Oh, welcome to Hatfit. Hatfit. Love a tunnel. Listen to this. Woo! Woo! High five. Welcome to New York! I like how New York is so pushy. I love New York. Like, I have to love you. See? Look. I love New York. Why do... I, I mean, I guess I kind of do. There's certain aspects I, I love. It. And I love is a strong word as well, isn't it? You know what I'm saying? They have different names for this bridge, but I always call it the Tapian Z Bridge. It's now the Gover Como something something, but it's Tapian Z. And this bridge took, I don't know how long, 10 plus years to make. They built it alongside the other, the old Tapian Z Bridge. Uh, it's just amazing. Now you could, you could walk across it all the way, uh, but the, the sheer magnitude of this bridge with the Hudson River below is impressive. Was built I don't know if it still stands true but it's the second largest mall in America next to the Mall of America it's insane it's so huge huge uh, they have a problem with it though sinking 
and like part of the parking garage like went down a floor it's pretty crazy so anyways this is 287 heading to New Jersey oh just love the traffic and it's a balmy 91 degrees outside so this is just what the doctor ordered right here Whew. welcome to New Jersey New Jersey the Garden State what do they grow here dumpsters chemicals chemicals yeah southern jersey has some gardens but i've yet to see them make sure if you're visiting new jersey you stop and get your complimentary hepatitis a b and c vaccines <laughs> snuck into the outlaws garage before mother hen could land in her nest and then it was off to the new oakland pizzeria check this place out What in the wide world of pizza is happening? Making the pizza pie. The next morning. Well, probably the last night of civilization. Stayed at the in-laws. Welcome to New Jersey, the suburbs of New York City. Not a bad situation. And like I said, I got free pizza and beer out of it, so who's complaining? But they're really good folks too. And I know they're watching this video, so I have to say that. Anyways, we're uh, gonna take a quick stop down here at a very famous coffee shop that BMW riders like to visit. Yes, obligatory stop at Starbucks. And it smells bad back here, so I start looking at like the ground. I don't know if you can see this. And this sewer pump is running nonstop. And the interesting thing is when you come over here and you look at like the manhole covers, they're like bubbling. The whole pavement is bubbling. It stinks. So I'm gonna get out of here, Starbucks. It, I know it's a little dreary out right now, but it is 70 degrees and it is refreshingly nice. I mean, it's not bad at all. So I am enjoying this. Oh no, the road I wanted to go down is closed by police. Uh, what do I do now? Uh, I guess we'll just keep going this way. Skyline Drive. Oh, we gotta go this way. Here we go. <clears throat> this road here, Skyline Drive is awesome to ride. It is, but in the winter time, it's super duper duper bad. And we're gonna actually go to the next Skyline Drive here in a moment. I say a moment, in like five hours, we'll be at the next Skyline Drive. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. Uh, so when I got here yesterday, it was 93 with 100% humidity. So 70 degrees is a refreshing change. And I'm kind of, it's kind of going to be interesting camping tonight when we get down south because we're this storm is already headed north. It came through at like 4 a.m. And so hopefully we'll just miss all the rain, right? I'm going to eat those words. You watch. Exit 10 is Whippany. If you're not listening to what Mother says, you're going to go to Whippany. Yes, yeah. If Grandpa 5000 was with me, he'd be getting off at this exit right here. Coke story. Yes, sir. You can get all the Coke you want, buddy. Not that type of Coke, you weirdo. Welcome to Pennsylvania! Pursue your happiness. Okay, that's... How long has that been the motto? I thought Pennsylvania was like, turn up some butter. Or, how do you like my barn? I don't know. Anyways, welcome to Pennsylvania, bud. Yes, sir. Are you, Darcy? That's the biggest brewery around here. Ah, if he was only here, we could stop and take a tour. Oh well. All right, we're gonna get off here. This is a super cool store, Cabela's. Obviously, you probably know what that is, but this is like one of their largest flagship deals. 
Uh, and I'm starving, so we're gonna go to the Cracker Barrel, see if they have any food. Cracker Barrel is such a redneck, touristy thing to do, but I think their food is all right. And it's reasonable. And I think my brother's going to meet me here. My brother that lives down here in Pennsylvania, one of the 15 that I have. So let's, let's stop and check it out, shall we? Sitting on the front porch of Cracker Barrel. And look who's coming down the, the pike right there, buddy. What? Yes! All right, so that was fun. Got to see my brother. Tom's a good guy. They do sign language interpretation, which is crazy. I don't even know how you would learn how to do that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, got to see him and that was fun. I'm getting back on the road now, 78 West. And let's see, we've got about 200 miles to go before we make our next stop. These are the me most messed up towing situations you'll ever see. I've seen these down here before, I don't understand. They buy a car that's junk, and then they weld a thing to it and tow it back. It's crazy. There's another one coming up here too, you'll see it. There are vehicles that really probably shouldn't even be towing anybody. That one, that one's not bad, but usually they're super scary. Yep. Grandpa 5000 was with us, we'd be stopping at this exit as well for Hershey Park. Chocolate mine. Oh, you should smell what it smells like right now, right here. Live fish. Yeah, baby. This guy in front of us in the trailer has got some kids. I don't know how young, I think they're teenagers. Watch what they're doing every truck. Watch this. You, honk your horn. And if they honk, yeah! <laughs> that was awesome! Less than 100 miles before we get off this road, finally! Oh my word, there's so many trucks on 78. And it's farms on both sides. Whoa, Maryland! Whoa, we're here. Maryland. Buckle up, we care. And it's our law. It's so merry, and there's so much land. So they call it Maryland. All right, y'all. Now I can start talking with a southern accent. Why? Because welcome to West Virginia. Wild and wonderful. Yes. Do it. West Virginia. Woo. Now, if I get close enough to this guy in front of me, he has a black stone on the back of his camper. I could literally cook my lunch right now. I could just get up there, cook the burgers. Right? Virginia is for lovers. Virginia, buddy. Yeah. It's also the purple hot steak. Which they have a Jeep that matches their camper. <laughs> That way, if their Jeep breaks down, which it's going to, they can just steal parts off the camper and everything will match. Skyline Drive, baby! Woo! Finally, we get into some riding. And I don't know about you, but somebody turned on the heater. It is 91 degrees and like 2,000% humidity. It's disgusting. So here we go. Check it out, here it is. Let's not drive by it. Skyline Drive, buddy. Whew. Oh, it's right here. It's right here. And you gotta get your fate, you gotta get your hashtag picture right up in front of it, bud. Oh. Excellent! All right, bro. Southbound on Skyline Drive and all types of things to check out. Never done this before and always wanted to do it. So here we go. Four 
campgrounds on this road and I'm hoping one of them has a site. A couple of them said there were no vacancies. Uh, that'll be a bummer. The last time I came through here, believe it or not, I have never been on this skyline, but on the other side of the park, there's campgrounds and they were all full every time I rolled up on them. So it was super duper frustrating. I always lost my chance to camp because everything was always full. So I'm hoping one of the four has at least a site. Dickey Ridge Visitor Center, bud. Let's take a quick stop and check it out, shall we? I just talked to the ranger at the station and he said there's four campgrounds. Two of them are completely full. The first one, Matthew's arm or Matthew's leg, I can't remember, whatever. Some appendages of Matthew is the first campground. And he said there's a vacancy there, but it always fills up, especially on a Friday night because people from Washington DC like to come over and they fill it up. So that's a nice sight. So besides for that, uh, he said the next two are full vacancy wise. However, the loft, uh, was it Matthew's loft? No, I forget the name of it. But anyways, the loft campground, the last one, he said usually doesn't fill up and it's 80 miles. And that would be the one to, to go check out if you want to, because it's really cool. Man, look at this view. This is awesome. So I'm gonna go check it out and I'm hoping it's a roll of the dice because it is the last campground of the four campgrounds. So guess what, if it's full, I'm done. And I don't wanna be done. Uh, the last time I did this in my pickup truck, like I said prior, I ended up having to get a hotel because I could not find a place to camp. And I just don't wanna have to do that again. That would be awful. So anyways, we're gonna cruise down and we'll check them out as we go. And the temperature, a little bit of relief, it's 77. It was 92 before in town. Oh, it was just oppressive. Matthew's arm, Matthew's arm, I knew it had something to do with Matthew and his body. Yeah. Obligatory. I love it. Big Meadows, that's why they call it Big Meadows, because there's a big meadow. You can stay here, they have like a lodge. They have a gas station, they have a bunch of stuff. Kinda cool. Looks like there's some people riding horses out there. There's a restaurant. Big Meadows was the second campground so there's four so we have two more to go I don't even remember him saying that one so maybe that was a bonus campground I don't know we'll just have to keep going maybe the last one here will be the right one all right this is the National Park Loft Mountain Campground yes you bud and the ranger said he's from Maine what the heck that's so funny all right, so I basically gotta check into any of the, I gotta find any of these sites that I want and then um, go back and tell them. <laughs> You're for dinner. <laughs> Little spike horn with the velvet. Store and got absolutely taken advantage of. Hey buddy. $6.67 for three small pieces of cheese, a small bag of pretzels and a small bag of cashews. They're the only thing here. 
I wanted to get a little ice and they don't have any ice and the power is not working. So everything is fun and exciting. People were absolutely losing their minds in there though. So not me. I was just like, hey, you know, you can't help it. It's not like the guy at the register could help it. Anyways, um, I was on iOverlander and found a site. It's a half an hour from here, but I thought a campground would be a little bit nicer just because of showers, but then <laughs> zero uh, power. So kind of stinks. Let's try to get the rest of the camp set up before dark and then make somewhat of a dinner.